We, we have another guest, and, and as musicians, all of you, I mean, uh, and Andres, I consider you the most serious musician out of the lot. <laughs> I would. Um, you, I'm sure you're going to be excited about this because we have a, an incredible guest to come in here. Um, you know him from his circular glasses, first and foremost. That's, that's right. His eyeglasses. Oh. Uh, uh, he is a member of, uh, maybe it's just me, but for me, one of the the – Rock and roll groups that legitimize the the art form of rock and roll. I and think that's safe to say, of course. I think the the album Sgt. Pepper um, was really one of the first kind of albums that made an artistic statement, as far as I'm concerned. Well, certainly, especially on the front cover. <laughs> yeah. That was a busy one, wasn't it? My word. Please, please welcome John Lennon. Well, thank you very much for having me, Scott. I, re- I really appreciate it. And America, this is the band American Football, who are sort of taking up your legacy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. I hope you become as popular as the Beatles one day. You know, we were a big band, you know. Really? Everyone saw us, yes. You, they were, records were flying off the shelves when we put them out. Why is that? You know, I think people thought our music was good. Okay, okay. And, and we, you know, we share the same opinion. <laughs> you guys both... Uh, we loved it. Yeah, or all four, four of you held that opinion. Well, yes, every one of us thought we were good. Yeah, yep. f- fantastic. You know, the, the first <laughs> yes. question that comes to my mind, and maybe Anders and American Football, you guys are thinking this uh, yourselves, is, hey, uh, John Lennon, are, aren't you dead? Well, you know, I get that question all the time. I am I was dead, but you, I came back. <laughs> oh, you know, these things happen. You die, and you can come back to life if you like. I've only heard it happening one time, not in comic books, uh, and that's a little man named J.C., oh, Jesus sure, Christ. So sure he did it, too, but he wasn't in a rock band. Mike, you, you've heard of this happening? Uh, Nikki Six. Nikki Six. he oh, yeah. died. Oh, okay, true? he was dead for seven minutes Woke or something? Woke up with a pool of blood in the sand and all that? I saw that behind the music. Uh, I don't know the details. <laughs> I, was I wasn't there. Yeah, yeah. right. So, okay, so the Jesus, wizard. Jesus Christ, Nikki Six, and now John Lennon. And now John Lennon. But how long were you dead? <laughs> oh, I would say maybe four years. <laughs> so 1980, <laughs> yep. you died. I died at age 40. And then 1984, you were back? I leapt out of the ground. <laughs> yep. And I would travel around and not, you know, tell anyone I was alive because I like the private time, you know. Seems like your accent and dialect has sort of changed in the past uh, 30 years that you've returned as well. well how do you too. mean exactly? <laughs> you know, this is how I talk. This is how I've always talked. Okay, yeah. Well, maybe you're just acclimating yourself. Well, to... you're probably used to my singing voice, which is slightly different. Let's hear a little bit of that. Oh, yes, I want to dance around and love you all the time. Is that a new song you've been working no, on? that's an old one. We never released it. <laughs> oh, okay. why not? It wasn't very good. Oh, okay. And you only wanted to release the good stuff, is yeah, that right? Yeah, we did. We released all the best stuff we had. Yeah. Well, this is quite an opportunity, isn't it? I mean, guys, uh, anyone have a question for John Lennon? I mean, how often is one in the same room as a Beatle? John, any tips for a band about chords and progressions? Oh, yes. Some lessons. Well, I, I heard you. Hey, you know some of the tricks already. Yeah. Of course. we got a few tricks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we have know. a wizard in the band. <laughs> we would just, the Beatles just call them progressions, but we also took lessons when we were younger. Show off. Hey. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> so <laughs> you're, saying, you're saying take lessons. If you're young, take lessons. If you're old, learn the tricks because you haven't time. <laughs> you know, you don't have time to learn all the, all the chords. Sure. If you're yeah. older. How, well, how many chords are there? Oh, there's got to be about seven or eight, <laughs> at least. Well, we got A. Sure. We got B. <laughs> Hold on, we're on two already. We got C. <laughs> we're running out. That's three. D. Mm-hmm. E. Yep. F and G. That's seven. Yeah, that's seven chords. I that's was wrong. <laughs> oh, no, there's also an A sharp you can use. Oh, okay, yeah. So, But that's eight, and that's it. That's it. Okay. That right. should be it. That's all we ever used. Yeah. Oh, really? So just A sharp was the only? <laughs> that's right. Well, you know what? We didn't all play chords, you know. Oh, what'd you play? Well, I played a chord, sure, and so did George. And Paul, he played the bass. And I get this question all no, the Paul, time. Paul played the bass? He played the bass guitar. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I get this question. People come up to me on the street and, and say... And they recognize you. Because they recognize me because I'm very recognized. You know, you mentioned the classes. <laughs> This is, because this is the first time that I've ever heard of you actually being alive. It would seem like if people are constantly t- coming up to you, they sure, would talk Sure, I talk to them and I tell them, don't tell anyone. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> they don't. They don't do it. <laughs> but people will come up to me all the time, Scott, and say, I love the Beatles. Who was the drummer? And I have always have to say, you know, there were many of us in the Beatles. 
Some of us played guitar. Some of us played bass. But Ringo, Ringo was the drummer. Oh. That's the big Beatles secret, you know. <laughs> okay, okay. Very good. All right. I remember. Can I tell you a story, an old Beatles story? Oh, I would. Lo- I mean, gosh, yeah. I would love Please. To. Well, you know, one time we were, Ringo, as I said, played the drums. And he came up to me and he said, John, you know, maybe I could play the guitar one time. I said, no, Ringo, you can't do it. It's too late. You don't know how to play it. You'd have to learn how to do it. And he said, well, you know, I could learn. I could take a practice and learn from you. I said, we're about to go on Ed Sullivan's stage right now and play our songs. You, we, you, you do the drums for this time and then... Maybe later we'll discuss it, but we never did. And that was the last time he had ever brought that up? Yeah, he realized, you know, he can't just switch around instruments like that. <laughs> Espe- but, you know, he, he wanted to do it mid-song, too, and I said, really? <laughs> What? <laughs> you wanted to do it mid-song? Sure, he was crazy. He just, <laughs> just dropped the drumsticks. Throw me the guitar. Just throw yeah. it over here. Well, he, no, he wanted to play the drumsticks on the guitar, and I said, Are you, Now you're really <laughs> off here. This is not right. You know, Ed Sullivan, he wouldn't stand for that type of stuff anyway. <laughs> That's the only reason you didn't do it? Is because Ed Sullivan wouldn't stand for it? Well, that was the first time being on TV. We wanted people to understand who we were and who played what instrument. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, that's good. That's a good tip, American football. <laughs> yeah, you get guys... If you're ever out there and someone asks you, answer them honestly, what instrument you play in a band? That's the biggest part of being a band is <laughs> knowing what instrument you play and <laughs> telling people about it. Yeah. Huh. Anders, a- any question you have for the yeah. people? Yeah. And that was awesome. Um, yeah. What'd you do for the four years or how'd that work? Were you just, was it like, were you in limbo or when you Oh, no, dead? I was in heaven. You know, when you die, okay, thanks. you slip out, your soul sort of slides out of your body and rolls away. It doesn't just uh, like float through? It, like, it, no, I'm getting to that. You roll down the street away from the crowd of people who was, you know, gathered around your murdered body. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. You, you get up, you dust off yourself. There's dust that clings to your ghostly spectral yeah, you're, form? Yeah, you're rolling around in the New York City streets. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> mm-hmm. you get a, you grow wings and you, you, you get a, a harp and you fly up to heaven. Where Does do you get hurt? this harp? It just appears. You know, it's like a magic trick. Do the wings hurt? No. When they grow? Okay. No, no, no. It's very, it's all very, uh, as, as I like to say, unpainful. <laughs> Unpainful, yeah, and you like to say that. <laughs> <I'll>, <laughs> I like to say that if something feels good about me. British people are just sound smarter. When you used to have sex with Yoko, you. would you describe oh, it as wait, unpainful? <laughs> that's what I would always say. <laughs> I would come home, you know, from a late day of, of working at a record studio. Okay, so you used to work <laughs> nine to five at the record studio. That's right, we go in and from nine to five write music. Okay, I would come home and say, you know, do you want to feel? <laughs> Say, Yoko, do you want to not feel pain for a little while? <laughs> <laughs> and she'd say, sure. You know, we take our clothes off and have sex. <laughs> okay, very nice. Have wow. you seen her uh, since you've been back? Or you cut her loose? You know, I tried to avoid her. <laughs> yeah. Why is that? Well, you know, I didn't really like her very much. Oh. Because well, she broke up me, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> So she actually, you hold the opinion that she did break up the Beatles. <laughs> yes. You know, she told me not to tell anyone when I was alive. So what did she do? What was her plan, her evil plan to break up the Beatles? You know, she would come in and say, John, I've got some songs. So I, you know, work on these songs. And I'd say, you know, I'm at work. We can talk about this at home. It's <laughs> for so making each other feel better. <laughs> wow. Yes. Okay. Well, she, you know, she never liked Ringo very much. She didn't. Why not? You know, she thought he, he wanted to play the guitar. And she said, no, he should be on the drums. And I said, I've already handled it. <laughs> I've taken care of that, you know. Also, he had a lot of rings, right? Okay, is it? It's a joke on his name. No, no, he literally has a lot of rings. I don't know. I never looked at his hands. <laughs> You've never looked at his hands. <laughs> no. Well, you know they were moving so fast when he was playing drums. Oh, that's true. Yeah. yeah. He, you know, you know, Ringo is not his real name. What's his? His real name wasn't Ringo. What is his real name? It was Richard. Richard Starkey. Sure, but we all figured, you know, you can't have John, Paul, George, and Richard. It doesn't sound very good. <laughs> why not? It just why doesn't d- sound... Ringo sounds better, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, but why didn't you guys all change your name as well? I mean, Because we were all so used to signing our own names. <laughs> but Ringo wasn't. No, he had never held a pen. <laughs> really? <laughs> why is that? Because they were always filled up with drumsticks, you know. Oh, so he was too busy holding drumsticks. Sure. Interesting. And, and then we decided, you know, you can be Ringo because you already know an R and an I. Sure. Just f- well, how did he already know the R and the I if he had never held a pen? You know, this is all, <laughs> it's all sort of falling apart. This <laughs> oh, so, uh, 
Okay. Well, you know, through the passage of time, <laughs> yeah, you, know, you forget one exactly the details. The, the details if you, you know, yeah. coming back. Seems like you know a lot of the details, but then these yeah, particular like, ones, these, you're a little this one on. detail, I don't remember. You <laughs> oh, okay. Anyone else have questions for uh, about the Beatles or uh, solo material or 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 Hamburg, Germany? Oh boy. Mm. What about Stu Stutcliffe? You know, I try not to think about him very much. Why not? Because we kicked him out of the band. Sure. Yeah, because he wasn't very good at the drums. And I heard about this Ringo guy. He played drums? <laughs> who are we <laughs> talking about? <laughs> Stu Stutcliffe? No, nah, nah, that name, I forget who that is altogether. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe oh, you're I'm thinking, thinking of... of Pete Best. Oh, right, right. <laughs> I, liked, I didn't like him. You didn't like him? <laughs> no. Re- refresh me. Now, here's a question for all of you. <laughs> refresh me on who Stu Stutcliffe is. <laughs> he played bass, I believe. No, that's uh, was Paul. No, no, I mean... <laughs> This was in the early days when you played back in Germany, and oh, he right. he uh, he decided to stay in Germany and yeah, marry. Yeah, that's when we had artist. two bass players, and we didn't need. E- no, you know, I didn't play think bass we needed either point. of them. But Paul said, "You got to have me on bass." I said, "All right, you already, you know, you're already figured out in the John Paul George and Richard thing." Have you kept up with Paul over the years? <laughs> no, you, you can't really. He moves around so fast, you know. <laughs> what do you know? I don't know. What do you mean? When he goes on tour, he doesn't stop. And it's tough to meet up with him. He stops when he gets on stage, right? Well, you can't go out and have a conversation with your old friend, can you? <laughs> when he's out on stage. Sure. It would be nice if you were to walk out there on stage and sing a Beatles song or two with <laughs> that him. Would, you know, I think a lot of people would like that. <laughs> yeah, I do think that. <laughs> because we had a lot of hits. <laughs> sure. That they'd want to hear. You know, the original members singing the hits, that would be something. That would be so. Why haven't you done it? Well, of course, we can't get George back. No. Well, what he, he might be in the same situation as you. Sure. But he won't come back. You know, he likes it up in heaven, he said. So you didn't like it up in heaven? I think that, you know, bespeaks to uh, Anders' original question here. What, like, how, how did you actually get back here? Back on Earth? Yeah, yeah of course, yeah. You know, I decided to, to leap out of the ground. Wait, so you were up in heaven. I, my soul was up in heaven. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I said to God, you know, I said I should go back down. I was 40 years old when I died. Mm-hmm. That's too early, I think. Mm-hmm. And maybe I'll make some more music. Maybe I won't. <laughs> it sounds like you haven't. No, I haven't. <laughs> so you kind of held that as a bargaining chip to God. <laughs> yeah, I, d- I did a little lying to him, you know, to get to get back down. He said, okay, you can go. But um, if you ever see Paul, you know, go on stage with him and sing. And uh, now I can't, I can't see you two clearly from over here. But oh, sure. um, Let me turn is your is your body the one from like the ground, or is it the new body like from when you were forty and just? It's the one from when I was forty, but I still wear the, the old mop top hairdo. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah, you grew that out. Yeah, I like that. You know, I, we used to call them flop tops. Really? Yeah, and it was in an interview with a magazine. You know, when we were younger. And we said, yeah, we like our flop top haircuts. And they said, I can't hear you very well. I'm just going to say mop top. <laughs> very interesting. Well, you know, we were so mad. <laughs> really? Yeah. How, for how long? For, well, let's see. Since I, every, uh, when I died, I was still so mad. every moment. <laughs> every moment of my life. You were upset with this guy. Yep. Wow. And, you know, I had, I had Ringo go. I said, Ringo, go beat on his head like a drum. <laughs> and he did it. He was always going out and beating people up for me with his drums. With his with drums his st- actual drums? Yeah, well, <laughs> sometimes, sure. <laughs> you know, if he had the drum sticks, it would be a longer beating, but if it was just the bass drum, you know, that's one bang right on the head. Sure, You're yeah. You're done. Steve, you ever think about doing that? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Quite, quite often. Yeah. Wow, yeah. With who? Oh, uh, boy. I got nothing. Well, if anyone ever makes fun of your haircut, a... a Says the, you know you've got a certain hairstyle yeah or and gives they you, call gives it that hairstyle thing. an incorrect name right you could beat him up yeah so then the Steve and Mike you could have him beat people up for you we gotta get out of can yeah John can you tell us were were you in Beetle Heaven no I was in regular Heaven Beetle Heaven is for all the fans oh. <laughs> wait but the Beatles aren't there. No, it's just it sucks. <laughs> just wax. Sounds like Beetle Hell. There's wax figures of us up there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, like a Movie Land Wax Museum. <laughs> That's right. My goodness. So the Beatles fans, when they die, anyone who's ever a fan of the Beatles, mm-hmm. anyone who ever even liked one song? Uh, no, you have to own at least four of our albums on vinyl. <laughs> on vinyl? Yes. Okay, so... You know, all the CD people, you know, the people who own Beatles. They're not CD. allowed in Beatles. Uh, you're going to regular heaven. Awesome. You get to hang out with the Beatles in regular heaven. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's the irony. That's the irony of it all. Now, is there a Beatles hell? Um, well, you know, I don't know, but if, if anything, I hope Stuart Sutcliffe is there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, he mucked up a stage back there in Hamburg. I couldn't move around. He was a, 
He was getting in the way of my view of seeing Ringo on those drums. <laughs> Not his hands. Wow. That's a, half the reason I couldn't see his hands was because <laughs> Stuart Suffcliffe. Sutcliffe. You, you don't even remember his name. I hate him. <laughs> Hey, uh, you know, uh, Anders was telling us about all the stars and celebrities who are going to be on Workaholics this oh. season. Do you maybe want to be on Workaholics? I mean, that would be an amazing get for you guys. Uh, I mean, our our demographic, I don't know if they would like it. Uh, that's true. You do one, often wonder if, you know, a younger demographic wouldn't recognize John Lennon. Well, that's true. You are a 75-year-old man. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> You're really old. Oh, yes. My, my hair, you know, it's as white as my suit used to be when I used to wear that white suit around. Sure, oh, right. Man. I remember that one. Yeah. <laughs> From the Magical Mystery Tour years? That's right. But, yeah. you know, I had to get rid of it because I, I got it dirty, you know. Oh, how? You know, I was rolling around in it. <laughs> On the grass? <laughs> Yeah, when I died, I got you know I was wearing that suit and rolled around and got dirty. Ah, oh, that's too bad. So I jumped out of it and went to heaven. Now I can't. T- you're a 75 year old man, but I can't tell if you, the state of your body it, it looks to have decomposed a bit in those four years. Oh well, I, I really wish you didn't bring that up. I'm very sensitive about my looks. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's okay. Do you want to talk about it though? Ah, uh, sure, <laughs> sure. What do you not like particularly? About? <laughs> well, I just mean the fact that a lot of your flesh is rotted off of your face. Yeah, and yeah you know, I'm, I'm going to go on over to Beverly Hills and see if I can get that straightened out. <laughs> Put a new nose on and some cheeks. This is the first time you're hearing this? You've been back for 30 years. You know, a lot of people, when they meet legendary John Lennon, they don't start making fun of his looks and how he's decomposed. I'm so sorry. It's just they ask me questions, you know, about... <laughs> What it was like being in the Beatles. Well, I mean, I'm so sorry. Would you prefer I switch topics? No, it's your show. You can talk about whatever you like. All right. Well, uh, can I ask you, what is your favorite Beatles song? Oh, boy. You know, I don't have a favorite song, but I do have a favorite album. Oh, okay. It's, uh, it came out a few years ago. It's Beatles 1. It had all of our favorite top hit songs. The anthology? The, the Beatles 1, yeah. Yeah. It had, that, you know, I talked about the Sgt. Pepper cover. This had a very nice cover, too. It was red. <laughs> and it had a one on it. It had a one on it, so you knew exactly what the name of the album was going to be. So that was your favorite? That was my favorite album because it had all my favorite songs on it. <laughs> very nice. There were a lot of wow. songs, you know, on other albums I didn't like very much. Oh, really? Like yeah. which? You know, that Mr. Kite song that I wrote and sang on, I didn't like it. Oh, why not? Well, it sounded, it, you know how I wrote that, right? I read no. it off a poster. What? Yeah, that seems like a lazy way of doing things. <laughs> I wrote, recorded that. They hit stop on the recorder machine. I regretted it instantly. <laughs> really? But it seems like at that point there would have been plenty of time to say, hey, let's not release that. Let's uh, not. Know, put- I was busy back then. I had to get to a lunch. <laughs> you had to get to one lunch. Yep. And that meant a song you didn't care for ended up on one of the most influential rock and roll records of all time? Can you believe it? <laughs> I guess not.